It's time for Florida State basketball. This is the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by SunTrust. Learn how SunTrust can help you live for your sunny day at suntrust.com slash my sunny day. And by Coke Zero. You don't know Zero till you try it. Now your hosts, Gene Deckerhoff and head coach Leonard Hamilton. Hello and welcome to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We talk Florida State basketball on today's show. And, uh, Coach, we're winding down. It's March Madness time. By golly, it's uh, almost <laughs> ACC tournament time. Well, there's no doubt that this is winding down. The season is winding down. We, uh, we had a, a really interesting season. We've had a lot of ups and a lot of downs. We work very hard, and we're making progress. But uh, winding down this time of year is even more exciting. Regular season comes to an end this weekend around the country and tournament play just around the corner. The ACC Championship Tournament in Washington, D.C. gets underway next Tuesday. On today's show, a special feature on what goes on behind the scenes. It's not just the head coach. I mean, coach, you've got a <laughs> tremendous staff that works very hard 365 days a year. I'm very proud of our staff. We work very hard trying to take care of our players. We do a lot of things the right way. Uh, these guys work very hard, and they represent Florida State in an outstanding way. Yeah, behind the scenes of Florida State basketball. Oh, by the way, Coach, highlights of one of the most uh, exciting games we have played all season long. Highlights of Florida State versus Notre Dame. You ready for that? I was very pleased with the way we played in the Notre Dame game. I'm interested in watching the highlights myself. <laughs> Extended highlights on today's show. That's coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. And, Coach, uh, we promised to look behind the scenes of Florida State basketball. You've got a huge staff. You've got assistant coaches, obviously, that we have had a chance to visit with all season long. But the guys behind, the guys and gals behind the scenes, Coach, they got a lot of responsibility. There's a, a bunch of people in our staff, a, a group of young men and ladies that work very hard behind the scenes to make sure everything runs smooth. Uh, it's a, they do a tremendous job. They have great relationship with our players. They go beyond the call to do it to make sure that we have a successful program. In the heart of Tallahassee, the Florida State men's basketball team holds court in the Donald L. Tucker Center. Yet there's much more to a program than just the starting five. Much of the team's heartbeat lies in the team behind the team. Made up of students, staff, and professionals, this team is focused on putting the athletes' best feet forward whenever they step onto the court. And for these elite collegiate athletes, the front line of a strong defense begins with their bodies, and ultimately, who cares for them? Everything that we do in the training room during the week to try to, you know, uh, keep them at optimal health, and so whether it's, uh, you know, the therapy that we do or taping techniques or whatever, uh, you know, we want them to be able to be out there and perform as uh, close to 100% and pain-free if possible. From analyzing injuries to employing preventative treatments designed to avoid injuries altogether, the sports medicine division of the men's basketball program is vital for maintaining healthy athletes. You know, it's physical therapy treatment. Uh, we use different uh, modalities which are electrical machines that help uh, increase the healing rate. When the athlete's body is in peak condition, the focus shifts to how it can perform at an accelerated level. Enter the student managers. We'll do, like, we'll do free throw drills, so we'll count the free throws or makes and attempts. We'll get pads and hit them with the pads and stuff like that. Try and give them a beating so they get tougher for the games. In the postseason, offseason, um, preseason, we focus on individual skill development. During the season, it's a lot less. So that's where the managers are able to step up and work with the players on, on uh, whatever the players want to do as far as their individual skill instruction. Athletes maximizing their talent on the collegiate level build success. And that success can be further enhanced by an impressive wardrobe. We handle all the Nike allotment for men's basketball so we're in charge of anything that the players or coaches wear or managers wear that has a swoosh on it um, from ordering it to receiving it keeping track of it making sure we have enough making sure all the players have what they need these seminoles can be seen regularly decked out in custom practice attire warm-ups uniforms and even sweatbands if florida state athletes are the cream of the crop the team's custom apparel is the cherry on top I think what we do for the team is very vital. Uh, we're not really seen on the forefront of the court, but we're very behind the scenes. Um, everything that players are wearing, we've prepared for them. Everything that the managers are wearing, we've ordered for them. 
Now all that's left is the broadcast of these finesse athletes to television screens all over the nation. And at Florida State, every game is a chance for a primetime spot. Seminal Productions, the program's award-winning in-house video production company, is responsible for all ESPN3 broadcasts at Florida State. Its crew works seamlessly to produce primetime quality broadcasts. ESPN3 is, is a full broadcast. Like what we're doing on ESPN3 is what's being done all over the world on major networks. Athletes at Florida State are provided the unique opportunity to be covered thoroughly, from post-game sideline interviews to features and highlight packages. You know, at Florida State, um, we're doing some things that are that are pretty unique and special um, outside of what else has been going on in the country. You know, we want to give everybody their opportunity to to be noticed and to have an outlet to be seen. As the Knowles put another season in the books, the ranks behind the team feel just as much pride in successfully supporting the program for another year. From sports medicine to broadcasting, Florida State men's basketball is groomed and finessed by a tribe dedicated to promoting student success behind the scenes and on the court. Jonathan Schlacey and Jerry Latimer, Associate Director of Sports Medicine. And when you think about sports, one of the most common injuries is ACL tear. But what exactly is going on? Well, when uh, an athlete tears their ACL, um, there's usually two mechanisms of injury. Uh, the most common that you see is usually a contact injury where the athlete plants their foot, they get hit from the side, their knee bends in, and they hear a pop. The other uh, mechanism of injury is non-contact, usually during cutting or during landing. Um, and generally, women, our female athletes, are six to, time, six to ten times uh, more likely to tear their ACL than men, and most of the time those are non-contact. Why exactly is that? Why are women more susceptible to an ACL tear? Well, it's a good question. Uh, most literature points out to the way the women's neuromuscular control is wired. Women tend to use their quadriceps more during landing and taking off, uh, where men tend to use their hamstrings more than their quadriceps. Uh, women also have um, smaller knee slots where the ACL actually is planted and so it's more susceptible to being torn that way. There's some other uh, hormonal reasons that are out there in the literature, but um, usually it's a neuromuscular control issue. When a tear occurs, it's surgery. What is the surgery like? What's the process? What's the recovery like? Right, well, it, there are folks who tear their ACLs who don't have surgery, but they're usually non-athletic. Um, the athlete's uh, surgical procedure usually uh, starts a few weeks after the injury occurs so that the swelling goes down um, and then the surgeons have to recreate a ligament using another part of their body. Uh, typically it's the patella tendon. They'll take the middle third of the patella tendon and um, create a new anterior cruciate. Sometimes they'll use a hamstring tendon and at times they'll even use a graft from a cadaver. Um, once they put the graft in uh, and you let it you let the body heal from the initial surgery, then it's up to their rehabilitation with their athletic trainers and physical therapists to restore range of motion, flexibility, uh, neuromuscular control, strength, balance, power, and then slowly work them back onto the court or on the field or in the water um, by six months, sometimes nine months, sometimes a year. That's how long it takes to be ready to get back out there. Now you said people that don't need surgery or, or non-sports related, how do those occur and, and if you're not going to have surgery, you know, what's the recovery time like? Well, for folks who tear their ACLs who are not athletes, they generally uh, need to continue with the rehabilitation, seeing a physical therapist to restore their motion and their strength and uh, making sure that they their knee feels stable because as that instability occurs, you get an earlier onset of degeneration or arthritis. Well, Jerry, we really appreciate the time. If you want any more information, you can go to Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic's website online. We just scratched the surface about ACL tears, but we appreciate the time, and we'll see you guys next time.
We're talking Florida State basketball on today's Leonard Hamilton show. You know that. And, Coach, it doesn't get any better than beating a ranked team and uh, playing maybe as good a basketball as we played all season. Notre Dame comes to town. Well, there's no doubt that Notre Dame has had a tremendous season. They have upset some people. They're the most efficient team, one of the most efficient teams in the country. So we knew we had to be at our best. And uh, I think we set the tone early in this ball game at the defensive end of the court. Coach. No doubt that defensively we were really in a situation where we knew we had to play. There's Dwayne coming down on the, on the first position, and he knocks down the three. He was very comfortable, uh, really very relaxed. Bo Janoska had, had several blocked shots in the first half that gave us some opportunities to get out and, and get some easy baskets. That was a tremendous block. He did back, uh, blocked it against the backboard, and we were able to get out and and, and get some uh, transition basket. Yeah, uh, Boris Bojanovsky playing uh, like a senior and playing his best ball game of the season, maybe of his career, with uh, six block shots in the ball game. He had a great line statistically, but he also altered an awful lot of shots. Well, here again, that's excellent. RM making a tremendous pass to Boris. He sets the screen. He was really, really into the game. The guys were playing together. The chemistry was good. They play a little zone defense, and we bring some sharpshooters in. Monte Brandon very seldom takes that corner jumper, but you like what the result was on that one. What I like is that Dwayne created the shot for him. Here's Dwayne once again putting the, getting the ball inside inside the below the three point line, collapsing the defense and, and getting us out and getting us a great shot. Coach, you mentioned the extra pass and how efficient the offense is when you get that extra pass. A ball screen set up, and Dwayne Bacon has started the last. Game. He's rookie of the week. He had a tremendous performance. Well, I'm looking on the floor, and we have three. Of, uh, three freshmen on the floor. That's tremendous this time of year. Jacquez Smith comes off the bench and gives you some instant offense. He's had a good uh, couple of games here in a row. Well, there's no doubt that he's playing playing very well. His book, though, you don't. We got a rebound, but book kept the ball a, a, a large. My goodness, a great play by Benji Bell. He was really on, moving the ball, playing with a lot of confidence. We got back in a hurry after made passes, forced Notre Dame into a rare turnover. Uh, coming into the ball game, they were the top team in the country protecting the basketball. We forced him into seven turnovers in the first half. Well, that was Dwayne pushing the ball down the court, looking for his team, make, making another very unselfish play. Offensive rebound, Boris Bojanovsky. He goes up very strong. Boris got the rebound, but uh, Monte was the one who dislodged it and, and, and kept the ball alive. Again, at the defensive end of the court, Coach, we out rebound Notre Dame 40 to 35, dominating performance on the glass. Once again, here's Dwayne coming down, finding the teammate, pushing the ball down the court, making the extra pass, and playing very unselfish basketball. Get it to the captain, Devin Booker, dribbles, and nice dish. Another unselfish play by Devin. He had a wide open shot, but Bacon had a better shot. Yeah, three assists in the game, eight points for Devin Booker, our captain. Another, another penetrating pitch play. We got more of those types of plays uh, than, than we had any other time during the year. Malik Beasley can't get the layup, but he gives it off to a big guy that can. A nice stuff by Boris Bojanovsky. Well, there's no doubt, once again, a, an assist that led to a basket. Again, a defensive rebound. Notre Dame gets just one shot at it. And in transition, you like, XRM's got the green light to take that shot in transition. Every, everybody on our team pretty much has the green light to take a high percentage of shots. And about a 15-foot jump shot. Devin Booker gets, uh, how about the alley-oop pass? <laughs> Was that an ad-lib play, Coach? Well, here again, the guys are looking for each other, creating uh, opportunities for each other. Benji Bell came off the bench and had 14 points, and he finds a teammate. Maybe not an open shot, contested shot, but Dwayne Bacon playing not at a freshman level. He looks like he's a mature basketball player. Well, but the, the, the most important thing here is Benji Bell was looking for him. He got into the lane, collapsed the defense, and we shot 46% from three-point range. That'll help you in the first half. That'll help, help you on anybody's book. Coach, Florida State, uh, we never trailed in the game against Notre Dame, and we built as many as an 18-point lead in the first half. We're up 16 at halftime. That's a tremendous first half of basketball. That means that we're, we're growing, we're improving, we're learning more about how to play with each other. We had a, a nice rotation of players that came in the game, we seemed to all be on the same page. We made the extra pass. On the other hand, defensively, we got stops that gave us an opportunity to get a few more attempts. If you liked highlights of the first half, we have second half highlights just around the corner. Stay tuned for those. The Florida State Seminoles have a 16-point lead at halftime over the 20th-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. 46 points and a half. That's a lot of scoring. Well, we shot the ball very well. There's no doubt about that. But I think the, what really helped us was that we really defended very well. We And a, a lot of, of our energy on the defensive end was as a result of the respect we had 
for Notre Dame. Second half highlights underway. Now Florida State never trailed in this ball game. Malik Beasley, a leaner in the lane. Malik Beasley trying to fight through a slump. That was his only made field goal of the ball game. Well, well, there's no doubt that I'm not really sure it's the slump as much as it is. People just really, really giving him a lot of attention. They really, really are defending him. That's old Joe really doing a good job coaching. He might be coach of the year. <laughs> old Joe and Phil Cole for two guys you'd like to have available to play for you right now, wouldn't you? No doubt about yeah. that, that. We missed that physicality that they gave our team. Yeah. Notre Dame, a, a team that has been, well, they got 10 wins in conference play, and uh, they, right now they're a high seeded team in the tournament, but we take them to task in this ballgame, build as much as a 24 point lead in the second half. Devin Great ball Booker. movement, Devin Booker, but Bacon. Bacon there he was uh, finding the open man and what can I say about Devin he's had a great year for us. Devin Booker with a nice driving layup and shot it with a left hand and here's an open shooter in the corner Benji Bell uh, is red hot from beyond the arc. Well Benji is very capable of, of, of being consistent from three point lane. He, he has a little bit more confidence because he's a, he's a, obviously he's a junior. Uh, he's been around a while he's played in the championship a, a tremendous block. Uh, our guys were really on point defensively looking for each other. Uh, we'll watch this block again. I, 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 it could have been Dwayne or Jared that, Quez. That, that was Dwayne yeah, Bacon. Dwayne got the block. I think he got his second block of the year. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a three-point shot. Devin Booker's been doing that his entire career for us. No doubt about that. He's a tremendous shooter. His defense, he has to be one of the best defensive players in the, in the, in the, in the ACC. Among the leaders in the ACC and steals a nice alley-oop pass and Jarquez Smith. He's got springs in his sneakers, Coach. He can get up and <laughs> elevate and stuff it. Let's watch it again. Great pass, a perfect pass right at the rim by, by Benji Bell. That you love to see guys playing. Wow, another block by Bo. Uh, Bo had one of those games uh, where he, he was rotating over. Uh, boy, that's just a tremendous block. Kept it in bounds. Uh, and, and, and gave us a chance to get another extra possession. Now he works at the offensive end. Nice little drop step and a little baby hook shot by the seven foot three in center. Well, well Boyd's had one of his better games in his career, but I, but I also thought the team just played well together. That's Benji Bell knocking down another three. Benji Bell, we, we think of Benji as a shooter, but he has good point guard skills too. He can bring the ball up and run the offense. No doubt about that. That Dwayne was on fire. There's no doubt about that. He was he was uh, he was felt comfortable. He was shooting in rhythm. Uh, he was taking high, high percentage shots. Uh, really, really had a great game for him. We need more of that as we wind the season down. Leading scorer in the game with 21 points, and uh, Coach is 3 of 5 from beyond the arc. He has really developed that, that long-range jump shot. Well, Mike Saxon comes off the bench <laughs> as a walk-on. He doesn't get very much point, very much time. He knocked that shot down. I thought that was a three-pointer by X, uh, but I think he might have stepped on the line. 77-56, Florida State knocks off a ranked team, and Coach, after further research, uh, the third biggest win margin against a ranked team in school history. Congratulations, but a tremendous win. Well, you, you never really concern yourself with a lot of statistics like yeah. that. The main, you always focus on just trying to win a basketball game, and you're more concerned about guys that's playing up to their potential. We just hope that we can continue to keep playing that well for the remainder of the season. Florida State knocks off Notre Dame. Next up at Syracuse at the Tucker Center, 2 o'clock tip-off. We'll talk about the Syracuse Orange and look ahead to the ACC Championship Tournament in just a moment. Welcome back to the Leonard Hamilton Show. We've seen exciting highlights of Florida State's huge win over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. We've looked behind the scenes of Florida State basketball. Coach, I guess it's time to X's and O's the Syracuse Orange in Tallahassee, a team that beat us on their place. It's our turn to pay them back, perhaps. Well, Syracuse comes to Tallahassee with that patented 2-3 zone defense that they've always become famous for. Uh, it, it, Gives a lot of teams difficulty as they try to attack that zone defense. I like to I like to save some of those three pointers we made against Notre Dame in the Syracuse game. So we got to execute against their zone defense. But on the on, the, on our defensive end, they have tremendous one on one players. Uh, they shoot the ball very well for the perimeter. We had a hard time defending them. They shot close to 60 percent uh, on, on the offense def, offensive end up there. We got to do a better job defending them this time. Coach, it's uh, the first game or the second game of the month of March for the Seminoles. Or the first game, we, we we beat Notre Dame the last week of February. It's officially March Madness time, isn't it? No doubt about that. As we move from the Notre Dame game to the Syracuse game in a, sh a short few days, then we move on to the ACC tournament. 
is March Madness. March Madness is here. March Madness is here. We appreciate you tuning in and watching highlights of Florida State basketball every week on the Leonard Hamilton Show. We have a show coming up next week as the Seminoles head to Washington, D.C. for the ACC Championship Tournament. That's our show for today. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, go Noles. This has been the Leonard Hamilton Show. Brought to you by SunTrust. Learn how SunTrust can help you live for your sunny day at suntrust.com slash mysunnyday. And by Coke Zero. You don't know Zero till you've tried it.